Yesterday, no, my millions of Gandhat Pranam in the lotus feet of my Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, the Sota Sishma Bhakti Prabhupyan, the Sodoshma. And the same in the lotus feet of my Sikha Guru, Om Vishnu Pad, Nitya Lila, Pravishtam, Sishma Bhakti, Vedan Swami. So, we discussed about the birth of Krishna, or certainly he was Jasoda Nandan. Partly he was Devaki Shud or Rohan. Devaki or Vasudev. Now, when Krishna took birth, Nanda Baba went to Mathura to pay tax to Kansa because Kansa was king of Sushen Pradesh, Mathura also. So he went there, paid the tax, and in the night, Vasudev met him and told, uh, Nand Baba told that, I am happy that you have son in these old days. Then Vasudev told that, uh, you should go at once to Braja. Don't delay. Many demons here and there moving. There be anything danger. And then, very soon, praying Narayan that save my boy, I'm coming. When he reached his home, very strange, a demon, Putana, Sakhi to Mitra to Kans, very powerful, 10,000 elephants power in her. Really he was like a kuluk, owl, very big, very big, very big shape. But by the advice of his sakha, he was moving here and there to kill all the boys who are ten days before they have taken birth or after ten days, within ten days. But you should know where bhakta are glorifying, telling Harikatha each other of Krishna. There, Bhut, Prayat, Pishachiri, Takini, and any demon cannot come. Only Krishna wanted to play some sweet pastime, and that is why Jog Maya inspired that Putana to come there in Braja. Otherwise, any demon cannot come. But Putana, Trinavat, Saptasur all came, Agasur, Bakasur. Why? To renew the love and affection of gopis, Nandvabhaja, Sodha and Brajabhashi, to Krishna as new, new, new one. 
so by the inspiration of jog maya krishna ichha shakti putna ke and in a very beautiful form she came in the night she came so she was so beautiful her wrist kamar first went lean and thin and so looking that as if any gandharv gandharva has come or any lakshmi saraswati or anyone has come to see krishna so she came in a beautiful form and went to directly in the house of jashoda where jashoda and rohini mata they were loving and crossing to krishna they saw that very beautiful devi they could not uh, check her she at once came and la 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 tell my dear boy and he take took in her lunch at that time krishna closed his eyes why chakravarti thakur is telling five reasons that a boy friend in the lap of mother very happy play taking breath but unknown person comes then by bal lila and he closes his eyes so krishna is a bal lila secondly tadrish amangal darshan aaye she was in a very beautiful form but like man ke ke bole dar mein dil pa la in the very beautiful case very tikshna short short it there so very beautiful form but to kill krishna to give poison she has come so krishna closed his eyes that i don't want to see a mangal this lady because she is coming to kill all the prajvasis son but by the jog maya prabhav she only directly when she came to gokul he came directly in the bhavanand bhavan he could not go here and there so he came first there and she took krishna in his that so krishna so this is amangal i don't she wants to kill रुधिराशना उतना पाल खातनी रुधिराशना सो कृष्ण सर क्लोज हिज आईज ऑल्सो इफ एनी वन इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ कृष्ण स्वयं भगवान एनी माया any kapatata hypocrisy hypocrisy cannot be it will at once go away so, so when she will come in front of krishna and krishna will see her then at once his maya maya will go and she will be brought and then mother jasoda will fear all prajvas will fear close the eyes and he came the form of mother Uh, and telling oh my dear son my dear lalla 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 like mother krishna god did not want to kill her and to get so much pain to her that she will cry because she has come in the form of mother and that is why in the end when i will 
सब हर लाइफ एंड एवरीथिंग एंड व्हेन सी विल बी डाइंग देन सी विल डू रेस्टलेस दैट आई कैन नॉट सी सो ही सो व्हेन सी केम ओ लल्ला ओ दैट दे आर रियली नॉट योर मदर हाउ दे कैन हैव लेफ्ट यू हियर हेलो and she too can gave her the best to krishna then closing her eyes saw that beast poison poison also and with poison her life now she could not keep her maya and she became very big and she krishna holding her wrist very tightly with feet and mouth and she was shocking and she of became of 6 uh, 12 miles long very big and she wanted to go to kans that my brother can save she wanted but krishna told that i cannot live up give up you if i have come to me and in praja how can i be any how i feel and thus she sobbed and with a big form she fell down where fell down not any cows prajbasi were killed but only the trees of kans bagicha was there nearby god and very beautiful mango and other things were there so it was all crushed <laughs> but krishna was doing even playing on the breast of all prajal was following her and they came nearer and saw that oh he is safe and he still he is playing on her breast they took it and went to jashoda and gave it in the lap of jashoda and lost jashoda called all brahmins and then with kali ga black guys black cows urine and gobar kanda mixed and with the tail of cows they began to get the snan of isekam and then brahmins were called they were reciting mantra and then lata lalate ke samam arakshita like so all twelve and they did all these things and then mother jashoda began to he she took him and began to to reoxidate him and give him so beautiful this voice then you know that when bhakta reciting singing dancing glorifying hari any form of krishna especially supreme lord krishna any demon any pishachi cannot come but why she came oh that krishna will play beautiful past time sweet past time after that in world the songs will be sung if prepared and thus all calamity sufferings of life and the less pain of life but and dead life every will thing will go so for this the yog maya of krishna or oh, inspired them and took them to praja otherwise they cannot in the which way krishna doing so many past times uh, i want to tell you puranjan you know puranjan have you heard puranjan in bhagavat fourth canto 
very beautiful and inspiring Bhagavad Katha. Narada told to Prachin Parhi, what is this world? Prem Priyojan can speak about this. You don't know? You? You know all Krishna Katha, but not this why? <laughs> this is a very powerful injection. I want that this injection should be given to you and all. Very powerful. Then you should. Have you read? Ah. In brief, you can tell. Otherwise, I will have to tell. Better you should. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. <coughs> so Srila Gurudev is ordering us to discuss the story in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is narrated by Sri Narada Muni to King Prachina Barhishat. And this story is an allegorical story called the story of King Puranjana. He was narrating this to King Prachina Barhi and he was narrating to him an allegorical story about another king named Puranjan. So Narada Muni, he came to the palace of this king after instructing the king's sons, who later took to the pure path of Sanatan Dharma, eternal spiritual realization, and they performed severe austerities and they attained pure bhakti and pure Krishna consciousness and they all became perfected, liberated souls. After instructing those sons of King Prachina Barhi, then Narada Muni came to the palace of the king. When he came to that palace, he saw that the king was actually so much absorbed, he was very materially absorbed in doing karma, fruitive activities. Uh, this is the nature of the conditioned soul in this world, that his whole consciousness is absorbed 24 hours daily in doing karma, activities which are directed towards sense gratification only, or in other words, material enjoyment within this world, within this universe, either on higher planets or on this planet. So in this way, the king was absorbed in simply the external practices of dharma, but not actually the sanatan dharma, the eternal dharma of the soul. And he was performing many Vedic yajyas, sacrifices, but which type of sacrifices? Animal sacrifices. Because in the Vedas there is prescription for, in the former times especially, that occasionally great emperors and kings would perform an animal sacrifice. But this animal sacrifice was performed by very highly qualified brahmanas, and the animal would actually be rejuvenated and be given human form in next life. Uh, but still, this was for the purpose of karma, karma kanda, fruitive activities. And the king was very much absorbed in this way. So he was, uh, his intelligence uh, was lost in this kind of endeavor. And Narada Muni, being the great pure Vaishnava that he is, always traversing the three worlds, always trying to benefit the conditioned souls, Narada Muni 
Now he came to the palace of the king, wanting to awaken the king to self-realization. So when he came there, O oh, the king dutifully greeted Narada Muni with great respect and gave Narada Muni a very uh, nice seat and worshipped him. And the king, he was not an ordinary person also, even though he was absorbed in all these fruitive activities, he, he himself could understand that this was not good for him. And therefore he prayed to Narada that you please enlighten me so that I can actually understand what is the true goal of life because now my intelligence is lost in all of this seeking after the temporary happiness of this material world. So in answer to this, Sri Narada Muni began to uh, very mercifully instruct the king, teaching him that all the happiness and distress of this world, they have nothing to do with the eternal soul. And he began to describe a story to the king, the story of King Puranjana. So this name Puranjana means old person, Puranjan. It refers to our soul or the Atma, because everyone in this material world, which is uh, inhabited by millions and millions of species of life, all the living beings within this material world, they're actually eternal souls who have forgotten their eternal spiritual identities. They're absorbed within the identification with this material body and everything connected with this material body. This is called aham mameti. Aham means I and mama means mine. So this false absorption in the uh, body and the things connected to this body is the very cause, the root cause of the conditioned soul's uh, forgetfulness of his eternal identity. But yet, every soul who is going from one body to another, lifetime after lifetime, they are all be, uh, birthless. Najayate mriyate va kadachin nayam bhutva bhavita va nabhuyaha. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that all the souls within this material world, they are without birth. That means they are old. Old meaning even without beginning. And namriyate, they never die. They are eternal. They cannot be harmed by any condition of this material world. But they are identifying with all the passing phases of this material world, birth, death, disease, and old age. So Narada Muni began to describe the story of King Puranjan. So he described that King Puranjan, there's many names uh, of different places and different personalities given in this very long allegorical narration. And I'm going to try my best to cover the, some of the main points in this narration. So, so, Puranjan had a friend named Avigyata. Uh, Avigyata means the unknown one. So, that unknown one, who is that? That is the eternal friend of every soul within this world who they are not aware of. Uh, within this body, we have our individual soul. Uh, but next to our soul, just like two birds that are sitting together on the branch of a tree, next to our individual soul is our eternal friend. And who is that? The Paramatma, the Supreme Soul, or in other words, Krishna, the expansion of Krishna, who is seated next to us as our very intimate friend, but he's called a vigyata. A vigyata means unknown, because the conditioned soul is absorbed in this world, just like the two birds on the branch of a tree. One, one bird is very busy trying to eat all the fruits on the tree. He doesn't even notice that sitting right next to him on this branch is another very beautiful bird, a very intimate friend of his, but he's not aware of that. But one bird is watching, that friend of his is only watching him. And this bird, he is trying to eat all the fruits on the tree. 
So King Paranjana had this friend, Avigyata, and he couldn't understand that he had such a friend. But in brief, you should know, because the story is very long. You'll have to finish. So King Paranjana, he began to search for a suitable place to live, and he traveled all over the world. Uh, even after a great deal of traveling, he could not find a place to his liking, so finally he became very morose, very disappointed. This means that the conditioned soul is constantly traveling from body to body of so many species of life within this material world. And he doesn't find any of them to be satisfactory, only he's suffering and then dying and again suffering. So King Paranjana, he had unlimited desires for sense enjoyment. Consequently, he traveled all over the world to find a place where all these desires could be fulfilled. And unfortunately, he found a feeling of only insufficiency everywhere. So, once while he was wandering in this way, he saw on the southern side of the Himalayan mountains, there was a place named Bharat Varsha. And we all know that Bharat Varsha means India, that place of spiritual cultivation. That in there, there was a city in Bharat Varsha that had nine gates all about, and it was characterized by all auspicious facilities. So, what is the city of nine gates? This human body that has nine openings within the body, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth, two ear holes, one genital and one anus. This material body is called the city of nine gates in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna also refers to it as such. So now, King uh, uh, Puranjana, after, after wandering, he finally came to the human form of life. And he, received, and he now started to inhabit this city that had nine gates. Oh, that city was surrounded by walls and parks, and within it were towers, canals, windows, and outlets. The houses there were decorated with domes made of gold, silver, and iron. So this is all representing how the body is constructed. The walls of the body are the skin. The hairs on the body are compared to parks. The highest parts of the body, like the nose and the head, are compared to towers. The wrinkles and depressions on different parts of the body are compared to trenches or canals. The eyes are compared to windows. The eyelids are compared to protective gates. The three types of the metal in the city are compared to gold, silver, and iron. What does that represent? The three modes of material nature, passion, goodness, and ignorance. So, in this way, this material body, which is actually compared to a, a bag, full of what? Uh, three, three datu, kunape three datu ke, kapa, pitta, vata. Simply mucus, bile, and air, this material body is constructed of. So in this way, now, King Paranjana, the soul, is inhabiting this body. And the floors of the houses in that city were made of sapphire, crystal, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and rubies. Because of the luster of the houses in the capital, the city was compared to the celestial town named Bhogavati. So, the city of the body is called the heart. The heart is the capital. Just as the capital of the state is especially gorgeously filled with very high buildings and lustrous palaces, so the heart of the body is filled with various desires and plans for material enjoyment. So, such plans are sometimes compared to valuable jewels, sapphires, rubies, pearls, emeralds. In this way, the heart becomes the center for all planning for material enjoyment in this life. On the outskirts of that city, there were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake. Also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees that were always chanting and humming. So in this way, the body has so many different arrangements for sense gratification. And the soul inhabits the body and now starts to take part in the facilities that are provided by nature for, sen for sense enjoyment. In such an atmosphere, even... Oh, the branches of the trees that were standing on the banks the branches of the trees that were standing on the bank of the lake received particles of water carried by the spring air from the falls coming down from the icy mountains now this refers to material desire to enjoy the five uh, sense objects of this world 
रूपा रस गंध शब्द